Hello and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian and in this guide, this should be the ultimate to-do list before Beyond Light drops in September. As a part of this, whether you're a new light guardian or a returning guardian for this season, getting ready for Beyond Light and the future of Destiny, there's a lot that we have to do and a lot that we can cover. But let me not make it overwhelming for you. Let's start off by just going to the tower. Whether you're new and you're just returning to the game, if you haven't done all the year one stuff, let me direct you over to Amanda Holiday. She's over there in the hangar. Just jump into the courtyard, run down the corridor, and up to Amanda and talk to her, and she's gonna have the three legacy quests that you're gonna wanna pay attention to. And those are the Red War, Curse of Osiris, and Warmind. My personal recommendation is if you're short on time, focus on the Red War and then do Warmind. Curse of Osiris wasn't my favorite, but if you're a completionist, you can go from there. At this point, just pull up your map by holding the select button and looking over the tower and find anybody who's got the crown symbol on their heads. This is gonna indicate a quest line for you. So again, focus in on the campaigns and then look for the quest line symbol. There's other content that we're gonna cover here just in a second um, when I go over the world maps and more and then we're gonna go planet by planet. Uh, so there's a lot of details in here that we're gonna share, but just keep in mind, you wanna look at those quest symbols. If you wanna look at your quest log and don't be overwhelmed by my quest log, I've got a lot of quests and things that I have yet to complete. Some of these quests are vague, some of them actually provide details on how you're progressing, and you can track them by pressing A, and you can have only up to three different quests track at a time. What this does is allows you, when you just hit select button on the right hand side, you can see your overall progress. Some quests have you do PVE, some quests will have you do PVP, so keep that in mind to pay attention to what's going on on the tower and who to talk to to kind of kick off a quest. There's no reason not to grab the quest because you can hold up to 50 of them at any one time. Um, but it's, it's it, you might want to start actually working on them and not do what I do and just spend all my time in PvP and then realize, oh my gosh, planets are going away. I need to get things done. Okay, so with that advice, from just trying to keep it simple and not overwhelm you whatsoever, we talked about campaigns and then we talked about quests. From here, this list, this ultimate list is going to be completely up to you and how you want to drive it. Don't feel like you have to get everything done. Don't feel like you're like, just because I'm making this video that you're going to feel like uh, there's just too much to do. And so it's just better not to do it. Honestly, just take it in stride. I'm going to select the European dead zone here uh, as I've still got plenty of things to do, but it does give me a wide range of things to look at. Uh, you can see different quests like the zero hour heroic quest that I'm hopefully going to be able to complete soon. But you can see all these wonderful little orange icons. These are adventures. Think of these as sub quests or side quests that you can go on and they're going to tell you what they drop and what they're going to award you. And they're going to tell you the recommended power level that you need. Now, if you look at my power level, I have 1020. I'm more than easily enough capable of knocking out those different uh, those different objectives. So back to the planet here, you can see I've got plenty of these things to do and I'm going to put these, especially because they're in the European dead zone, on a little bit of a lower priority. But for the planets that are going away, which we'll talk about here in a second, I'm gonna focus in on things like lost sectors. And you can see here the difference. This locked sector I have completed, the drain. This lost sector I have not. It's still, uh, when I hover over ones that I've completed, it's gonna tell me their name. And when they're still incomplete, they're gonna be kind of this bigger picture to, to focus my attention on. And you just have to kind of run around the area to find them. They're like a little cave with a boss and a treasure chest at the end of it. Honestly, a lot of fun. And some of the quest lines that you're gonna get are gonna put you in there. This symbol is for regional chests. These are different treasure chests that you'll find out in the world. So just kind of pay attention to those to be able to look to find different loot and more. Obviously looting treasure chests is a big part of the game because it's an RPG, but I'll leave it up to you. You'll see various strikes here on the map uh, and some strikes like this one, or specifically, if we talk about Lake of Shadows are great, especially tied into different quests and are rewarding and fun. Some of them also drop special items from them and some of them have like nightfall strike modifiers for the specific items and titles and we're going to dive into detailed list here in a second now before we dive into the full completionist list let's talk about briefly the planets that are going away and those are mercury io mars and titan you're also if i hover over here to nessus you'll see that the leviathan raid which is right here is going away as well and this includes the leviathan the Levi world's eater crown of sorrows the Spire Stars, the Menagerie, which I have yet to unlock, and some other things. So pay attention to that. That is essentially, if you really want to knock out those raids, 
you have until September 22nd to do so. But these are the planets that are going away. So if I kind of click on Mars, it's where I've been spending most of my time. You can see here I only have two of the adventures left to unlock and complete, as well as I've got all the quests that I've currently done on the planet completed. So I'm working through my, my way through there. I haven't done all the lost sectors, and so that's gonna be one of my next priorities as I continue to explore the world of Mars and try to focus in on these data recoveries. It's important at this point to say that if you're short on time, if you're if this if you're watching this and it's a couple days before the update and you're like, what do I need to do? Make sure you just Google a guy and just help uh, give yourself something to, to focus your attention because sometimes these things aren't that like just telling. Sometimes you have to really rely on the community to come together and put these uh, puzzles for you together themselves. So again, pick either on Mars, Titan, Io, or Mercury. Honestly, I would say like focus in on a planet one at a time, getting these things knocked out and completed, uh, especially when it comes to various flashpoints are gonna help reward powerful gear. So by doing this, you're naturally gonna be leveling up anyway and getting to the soft level cap uh, over time, just you know, over the course of the summer or prior to the uh, obviously patch going live. At this point, I do wanna point you over to Reddit. If you wanna find the full written guide, be sure to go give Seiko uh, thumbs up here for their post talking about the different planets and where you can find the specialized items. This is exotics or legendaries, even catalysts and more. Let's go ahead and go down the list and tell you what you are looking for. So on Mars, there's 40 override frequency nodes collected in the Warmind emblem. Now you can acquire the sleeper simulant, have a hard time saying that, by completing the quest line Violent Intel. You can acquire Polaris Lance by completing the quest line and Ascent Down. You can acquire and collect all the Escalation Protocol armor and the Kelios weapon. Now, you're going to need both the armor and the weapon for the Wayfarer title. The Braytech Osprey rocket launcher is going to drop from Strange Terrain, and the Nightfall Strike, this is going to be uh, required for the Wayfarer title as well. The Worm God Incantation Transmet effect will drop from the Will of the Thousands Nightfall Strike. You're going to also want to shoot all memory fragments scattered across Mars. There's 30 for the Worldline Zero Exotic Sword and 45 for the G335 Asterius Overdrive Sparrow. You can hit all bosses from Escalation Protocol with the Worldline Zero for its catalyst. They say this is going to take you up to five weeks if you want to do it because you have to hit all separate bosses on Wave 7 of Escalation Protocol. You can acquire Illumina by doing its respective quest, and you're going to need to either do Blind Well, Black Armory Forges, or Escalation Protocol to count for its quest later to do the Will of Thousands and shoot 11 crystals throughout the strike. All Vendor Engram loot and Anabre won't be acquirable anymore. If we move on to Mercury, acquire all the Prophecy weapons from Brother Vance. Just note this will take some time to acquire as you can only acquire three Prophecy weapons per week. You can acquire Sangri's Shell after acquiring every single Prophecy weapon. The Universal Wave Function exotic ship drops from the Garden World Fall Nightfall, and DFA Hand Cannon drops from the Tree of Possibilities Nightfall. All Vendor Engram loot from Brother Vance will not be acquirable anymore. On Io, uh, Cilion Nemora Sniper Rifle is acquired by the Primidion Nightfall. You can complete the questline Dynasty uh, to acquire Man o War Legendary Fusion Rifle. You can acquire Whisper of the Worm from Whisper Dungeon, and you complete its heroic version of the dungeon to acquire its catalyst and a ship a thousand wings. And then all vendor and gram loot from Asher Mirror is no longer going to be acquirable. On Titan, you can complete Enemy of My Enemy World's Questline to acquire the Rat King Questline. The, du the Duty Bound Auto Rifle drops from Savathun's Song Nightfall Strike. You can acquire the Fallen Transponder and continue the Questline Outbreak Perfected. Fantastic Questline, by the way. Highly recommended. All Vinner and Grams and loot from Sloan will not be acquirable anymore. Now regarding the Menagerie, all of its loot's going away. The Heroic Menagerie Swords are also going to leave, so you're going to literally want to try to acquire them on Warlock, Titan, and Hunter. The Exotic Questline is Scrap of Paper that Drops Truth can actually be acquired from the Menagerie. It doesn't drop all the time, so pay attention to that. The Sparrow and Ghost drop from the Triumphs related to the Menagerie are there as well. Uh, and then Exagi's Burden Catalyst drops from the Heroic Menagerie. Now regarding the raid, Leviathan, Eater Worlds, and Spire of Stars, complete on the comms questline to acquire the Legend of Akiris. You complete prestige versions of Encounters of Leviathan to acquire the Catalyst of Legends of Akiris. 
You can acquire all loot, including weapons, armor, and prestige variants of the armor. The Skyburner's Oath Catalyst has a chance to drop from the normal Leviathan. Don't know why normal was hard to say. Uh, Telesto Catalyst drops from the prestige Year of Worlds. Sleeper Simulate Catalyst drops from the prestige Spire of Stars. Regarding Crown of Sorrows and Scourge of the Past, all the weapons and armor is going to be vaulted, so try your best to acquire them, as they may still be useful despite their sunset. Uh, Terabeth drops from the bosses of the Crown of Sorrows. Anarchy drops from the last chest on Scourge of the Past. Fallen mods currently drop from Scourge, and Hive mods currently drop from either the Crown or Heroic Menagerie. Uh, other things that you just need to note, all black armory forge related to its vaulting includes armor from forges and craftable weapons from the forges themselves. This includes Jotun and Limandarku, <laughs> and uh, currently all quests of Aida 1. And Nzagi's Burden questline can be acquired by getting the Mysterious Box questline at the Volunteer Forge. Later on during the quest, you'll need to go to the Leviathan to kill Watchers in the Underbelly to acquire Watcher Lenses. So as we prepare for Beyond Light, even as I look at my own quest line myself, there's plenty for me to do. And honestly, at the end of the day, I'm just going to do as much as I can where I that enjoyment meets that thrill of completion and knocking things out of the way. For the longest time, I've been just a primary Destiny PvP player. Really haven't paid attention to the different quest lines. And only the ones that I've completed are the ones that have been just tied into PvP exclusively. But that's going to change, obviously, the <laughs> the feeling that things are going away and that I might not be able to get around to them is definitely a motivating factor. And hopefully this video has been a help in some way in directing your focus. Again, don't feel overwhelmed. There's no reason to. The game's just going to be there and it's going to change. And if you're using this as a way of evaluating if you want to get into the game, I highly encourage you to do so. It's free. You can download it and start playing and see if you like it. So that's the best thing I can say. Before things change and things ramp up for the next couple of years, this might be a good opportunity to see what Destiny 2 was like in year one with all the changes, obviously, and quality of life adjustments that's afforded you. And hopefully we'll see with Beyond Line a brand new quest log that's a little bit easier to manage. <laughs> uh, and that's be my own, that's my that's my personalized quality of life hope that I know uh, Luke Smith has already talked about. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Hopefully you're enjoying video games as much as I am. Um, there's plenty of things to enjoy playing, especially with Fantasy Star Online 2, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy 14. So much goodness, uh, especially some stuff that looks pretty exciting that's coming down the line. So anyway, regardless of that, let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you're new here and you feel like we've earned your sub, I hope you hit that subscribe button. Come back for more videos. And if you're already subscribed, you know you're already amazing. And I thank you and I love you very much. So anyway, that wraps it up for this video. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this video is sponsored by me. If you guys like uh, podcasts and long form content, I hope you check out Ginger Gaming Radio. Link will be in the description of this video below. So if you're still watching this video, thank you and check out the new channel for more content and hopefully you enjoy. Thank you.